Welcome everyone to St. John's Lutheran Church. It's wonderful to see you for worship this morning. We will follow the order of worship that's printed out for you in your service folder. If you open up that service folder to page two, you'll find today's focus. Today's focus, prepare the way for the Lord. Today we see John the Baptist preparing the way for Christ to come. We prepare for Christ to come by repenting of our sins. The people who were baptized by John confessed their sins. We also prepare for Christ to come by believing the comforting words of the gospel. Comfort, comfort my people, as we'll hear in the first lesson. By repenting of our sins and by believing the good news that Jesus came to take away our sins, we prepare the way for the Lord. That will be the focus of our worship this morning. We'll begin with our opening hymn, Comfort, Comfort All My People. That music is found on page 8. We'll sing stanzas 1, 3, and 4. And you'll notice that we'll stand to sing stanza 4. May Jesus bless our worship this morning. service on the bottom of page two of your service folder. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins to God our Father, asking him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Holy and merciful Father, I confess that I am by nature sinful 
and that I have disobeyed you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have done what is evil and failed to do what is good. For this I deserve your punishment, both now and in eternity. But I am truly sorry for my sins. And trusting in my Savior, Jesus Christ, I pray, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. Father has been merciful to us and has given his only Son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by his authority, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. We light two Advent candles, remembering Jesus who came in history. He came into a world of sin and death. We remember Jesus who came as the promised Messiah. John the Baptist prepared the way of the Lord. We hear his call to repent. We remember two Advent candles as a sign of our repentance and desire for renewal. Come, Lord Jesus, be our guest. hearts, O Lord, to prepare the way for your only Son. By his coming, give us strength in our conflicts and shed light on our path through the darkness of this world. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The congregation may be seated. The first lesson from God's Word today comes from the prophet Isaiah, chapter 40. Comfort, comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and proclaim to her that her hard service has been completed, that her sin has been paid for, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice of one calling, in the wilderness prepare the way for the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be raised up, every mountain and hill made low. The rough ground shall become level, the rugged places a plain. And the glory of the Lord will be revealed. And all people will see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, cry out. And I said, what shall I cry? All people are like grass. And all their faithfulness is like the flowers of the field. The grass withers and the flowers fall, because the breath of the Lord blows on them. Surely the people are grass. The grass withers and the flowers fall, but the word of our God endures forever. You who bring good news to Zion, go up on a high mountain. You who bring good news to Jerusalem, lift up your voice with a shout. Lift it up, do not be afraid. Say to the towns of Judah, here is your God. See, the sovereign Lord comes with power, and he rules with a mighty arm. 
See, his reward is with him, and his recompense accompanies him. He tends his flock like a shepherd. He gathers the lambs in his arms, and he carries them close to his heart. He gently leads those that have young. This is the word of the Lord. We'll continue with our psalm for today, Psalm 85. It's found on page 9 of your service folder. We'll sing the psalm in unison. For the gospel. The Holy Gospel is written in St. Mark chapter 1. The 
The beginning of the good news about Jesus the Messiah, the Son of God, as it is written in Isaiah the prophet, I will send my messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way. A voice of one calling in the wilderness, prepare the way for the Lord, make straight paths for him. And so John the Baptist appeared in the wilderness, preaching a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. The whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem went out to him. Confessing their sins, they were baptized by him in the Jordan River. John wore clothing made of camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. And this was his message. After me comes the one more powerful than I, the straps of whose sandals I am not worthy to stoop down and untie. I baptize you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. This is the gospel of our Lord. The Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The congregation may be seated for our hymn of the day on Jordan's Bank, the Baptist's Cry. We'll sing stanzas one through four before the sermon. The music is found on page 10. catchy intro, no soft start, just right into it. Mark chapter 1 verse 1 says, The beginning of the good news about Jesus, the Messiah, the Son of God. That's how Mark starts, somewhat abruptly. And that's how this sermon is going to start too. We're just going to jump right into it with the good news. I don't know about you, but I'm sick of hearing bad news. 2020 has been filled with bad news. Deadly pandemic, 
polarizing politics, civil unrest, natural disasters. We even lost the host of Jeopardy. All bad news. But today, finally, we have some good news. Today we have the beginning of the good news about Jesus, the Messiah, the Son of God. That phrase, good news, could be translated gospel. We have the gospel, which is the good news message that Jesus is our Savior, that he loves and forgives us, that his death and resurrection rescue us from hell, and that he has a home waiting for us in heaven. That's the good news about Jesus, the Messiah, the Son of God. And it's not just good news, it's the best news ever. It's the only news that can get us through all the bad news around us and the only news that gives us the hope of eternal life. Finally, some good news, the gospel. Let's start by looking at Mark's gospel. The word gospel can be used as a term for one of the four biographies of Jesus at the beginning of the New Testament. Matthew, Luke, and John all wrote Gospels. So did Mark. Today, we've got the very beginning of the biography, or the Gospel, that Mark wrote about Jesus. That's why, right up front, it says, the beginning of the good news about Jesus, the Messiah, the Son of God. It's almost like Mark is saying, listen up, everybody. I'm going to tell you the story of your Savior, and it's a good story. It's good news. Mark was not one of the 12 apostles, but he became a very close co-worker with Peter. So he knew the ministry of Jesus very well. Mark might have even been the first gospel written before the other three. We're not sure about that, but it is possible. And Mark, who, of course, wrote by inspiration of the Holy Spirit, he wants his readers, primarily Gentile readers like you and me, he wants us to see the power of Jesus in his miracles, in his resurrection, so that we can say together, with the Gentile centurion guarding the cross, surely this man was the Son of God. Mark's gospel helps us see how Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God. And Mark's gospel also introduces us to John's gospel. And here I'm talking about John the Baptist. John the Baptist did not write a biography about Jesus, but John served as the forerunner of Jesus. He prepared people for the coming of Jesus. The reading for today says, This was his message. After me comes the one more powerful than I, the straps of whose sandals I am not worthy to stoop down and untie. He's, he's talking about Jesus. That was his main job, to point people ahead to Jesus and get them ready for Jesus. John the Baptist was actually spoken of hundreds of years before Jesus was even born. The Old Testament prophets, of course, prophesied about Jesus, but they also prophesied about John the Baptist. Right here in our lesson it says, I will send my messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way. That's a passage from Old Testament Malachi talking about John the Baptist. And then it says, A voice of one calling in the wilderness, prepare the way for the Lord. Make straight paths for him. That's a passage from Old Testament Isaiah, also talking about John the Baptist. And both of these passages were written hundreds of years before John was even born. John 
was kind of an abrasive character and perhaps a little intimidating. It says, John wore clothing made of camel's hair. That's a little different. And he appeared in the wilderness preaching a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. John was not afraid to tell people that they were sinners, that they deserved punishment, and that they needed to repent. He was kind of a fire and brimstone preacher. Do you remember what he said back in Luke chapter 3? He said, You brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the coming wrath? Produce fruit in keeping with repentance. The axe is already at the root of the trees, and every tree that does not produce good fruit will be cut down and thrown into the fire. I mean, if you think of John the Baptist in terms of law and gospel, gospel being the message of salvation and law being the message of sin and guilt, well, I think that we would call John the Baptist more of a law preacher than a gospel preacher. He made sure the people knew that they needed to repent and they needed to change their ways. That's why so many people confessed their sins to him and were baptized by him. However, John was also a preacher of the gospel. He shared the good news too by pointing ahead to Jesus. That was his main job. Again, our reading says, this was his message. After me comes the one more powerful than I, the straps of whose sandals I am not worthy to stoop down and untie. I baptize you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. He's talking about Jesus. The answer to the problem of sin, the answer to the problem of all our bad news is always Jesus. Jesus is our perfect and our only solution. Later on, John the Baptist would say, Look, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world, Jesus is the Lamb, slain on the cross, and by his blood he washes away all your sins, and he promises to be with you and to strengthen you through all the bad news that you face in this life. Finally, some good news. Worthy is the lamb who was slain, the lamb who takes away the sin of the world. That's John's gospel. Which brings us to Jesus' gospel. Jesus is the gospel. He is the Savior. Everything Jesus did, he did in love for us. He came to this earth to live among us. He resisted temptation every single day for us. He faced ridicule and suffering and death. They nailed him to the cross for us. He came back to life in victory over Satan for us. He ascended back into heaven and is now sitting at God's right hand, ruling the universe for our good. Everything Jesus did and does, he does in love for us. This is Jesus' gospel. But we will never appreciate Jesus' gospel unless we first recognize our need for it. If John the Baptist was unworthy to stoop down and untie Jesus' sandals, think how unworthy we are. Make straight paths for him? I don't know about you, but when I look at my life and my behavior, and I look at the things that I think about, the things that I say or want to say, my paths aren't straight at all. I haven't followed the way of the Lord. I followed my own path. One of the words for sin is the word trespass. It means that you've crossed the line. 
You've gone where you shouldn't have gone. You've done what you shouldn't have done. You got off the path. Forgive us our trespasses, we pray. How can I make straight paths for my Savior when my paths are so crooked? Do you have crooked paths too? I bet you do. I think you know that you do. John says, make straight paths for him, but our paths are crooked. So, Jesus straightens them. He straightens us out by sending us the Holy Spirit. In this reading, John says, I baptize you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. Jesus sent his spirit into your heart. He converted you from unbelief to faith. He turned you into a Christian. And now he continues to send you his spirit to strengthen your faith and to straighten out your life. That's what John means when he says, he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. Jesus pours out his spirit to create and strengthen faith. He did that at Pentecost. He does that today among us. And he's done that for you in your heart. This is Jesus' gospel, which therefore makes it your gospel. This is what Jesus did and does for you personally as an individual. Try to put yourselves in the sandals of the people here in this reading. The whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem went out to him, to John the Baptist, confessing their sins they were baptized by him in the Jordan River. First, they confessed their sins. I bet that right now, you can look back on your life and think of something that you've done that you are very ashamed of. A sin you committed that still haunts you. Do you repent of that sin? then that sin is forgiven. Jesus forgives you personally as an individual because he loves you. Believe that. Second, the people were baptized. Have you been baptized? Maybe you're new to Christianity and you've never been baptized. Would you like to be baptized? Let's talk sometime. We can make that happen. But many of you watching this sermon have been baptized. Some of you were even baptized at this church, and I could show you the record of your baptism in our great big church record book. Baptism is the washing of rebirth and renewal by the Holy Spirit, which forgives your sins and works faith in your heart. It's your rebirth into God's family. It makes Jesus your brother and God your father. You're a child of God through baptism. You're a member of his family. So that means that you have an inheritance in heaven. Your baptism is what defines who you are. At your baptism, God says, this one is mine. This is my son. This is my daughter. That's who you are. This is your gospel, that you are forgiven by Christ and that you've been baptized into Christ. This is yours personally as an individual. Finally, some good news. In a world filled with bad news, death and pandemic hatred and suffering, finally we have some good news, the gospel. We have the record of Mark's gospel. We have John the Baptist preaching law and gospel as he points ahead to Jesus. 
we have Jesus, who is the gospel, his life and death and resurrection, his pouring out of the Holy Spirit. That's not just good news. I mean, that's the best news ever. And it's for us. It's for you. It's your gospel, your baptism, your salvation. I know that this has been a hard year. But don't let the bad news that surrounds you extinguish the good news within you. You have Jesus, and so you have everything. That's some pretty good news. Amen. You may remain seated. We'll join to sing stanza five. Eternal Father, throughout the centuries you repeated and affirmed your promise to send the offspring of the woman to crush the serpent's head. Through your prophets of old, you continually directed the eyes of your people to the advent of their Savior. We praise you, O Lord, for keeping your promise and sending your Son to destroy the works of the devil. As we prepare to celebrate the birth of our King, use your mighty word to shatter our pride and to rouse us from spiritual slumber and apathy. Move us to take to heart the words of John, repent for the kingdom of heaven is near. Send your son to redeem us from sin. Let th this good news be our joy and strength. Use it to cheer the lonely, encourage the faithful, and give hope to the despairing. In these days before Christmas, spare us from the stress of deadlines and the frenzy of commercialism. Fill our lives with the message of your peace and the music of your grace. Direct our eyes not only to the manger, but also to the skies, where we will see your Son coming again, not as a lowly child, but as the Lord of Lords. Lift up our hearts in joyful anticipation of that day. Come quickly, Lord Jesus, in your grace, in your power, and in your glory. We pray this in your name, and we also join to pray the prayer that you taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The congregation may be seated for the next hymn, Prepare the Royal Highway. It's found on page 11. We'll sing all the stanzas.
Blessed Lord, you have given us your holy scriptures for our learning. May we so hear them, read, learn, and take them to heart, that being strengthened and comforted by your holy word, we may cling to the blessed hope of everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. The congregation may be seated for the closing hymn, Arise, O Christian People. Uh, it's found on page 12. We'll sing all the stanzas. again and welcome to all of you. It was a joy to worship Jesus with you this morning. A couple of announcements. Um, we had our first midweek Advent service last week. Uh, this week we'll be having our second midweek Advent service on Wednesday at 3.30 and 6.30. Uh, I invite you to pick up the guide uh, for today. There's a couple of important announcements in there. Um, first, we're having a live nativity uh, at St. John's on December 19th from 4 to 8 p.m. 
um, we're looking for volunteers um, to be able to help with that. Um, for details about the event and how to volunteer, uh, please check the guide for this week. Um, also in the guide uh, are details about the 2020 Giving Tree, which you see uh, in the narthex. Uh, you'll find details about that uh, in the guide. Uh, and uh, right after church this morning, we will be having adult Bible class uh, in the meeting room. Uh, Family Sunday School is uh, postponed indefinitely um, because of Pastor Lehman's quarantine, um, but we are having uh, adult, uh, adult Bible class uh, looking at the book of 1 Kings in the meeting room. The Lord Jesus give you a very happy and blessed week.